Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is Pure Kicks back with another video, and as you guys can see by the title, today we're comparing the PG2 against the PG1. Let's get it. Paul George, one of my favorite players in the NBA, one of the smoothest scorers in the league. He is now part of the OKC with Westbrook and Melo. He debuted the PG1s last year at the Indiana Pacers, actually London, which was pretty dope. Mm -hmm. And now we're on to the PG2. And today we want to talk about how the PG2 does against its predecessor, which is the PG1. Let's get straight into it. So first off, talking about aesthetics of both shoes, PG2 came out looking pretty good. Leaked images came out as well but they didn't look great in these images, but no. much better in person. The PG1 on the other hand, great in pictures, Lovely. great in hand, Lovely. great on feet. Lovely. That was easy. Done. PG1 wins. Okay then. Now talking about the traction in both shoes, over here in the PG1, what we have are these diamond shaped traction patterns that are split up with these horizontal and vertical nodes spread out through the entire shoe. Now this is actually one of the best things about the PG1, mm. which is why I was really happy with these, is because the traction in the shoe was really, really good. For your first signature shoe to mm. get a traction pattern this good was fantastic. One thing I always rave about in the PG1s, especially with a solid rubber outsole, is how durable the outsole oh, is. Right. So out though you're good to go, it just gets the job done. You don't have to worry about wiping too much. So the traction in the PG1 is fantastic. Talking about the PG2, we've got that psychedelic floral traction pattern, which also does the trick straight out of the box. It felt great on both translucent and that solid rubber as we spoke about in our performance review. Only gripe on this side was that durability. I know you mentioned it there, but it didn't quite hold up as long as we'd like it to. The traction pattern itself is just wavy like nodes also, so they're all quite movable. But the rubber they use is quite soft, so at the same time, both on your solid and your translucent, it just doesn't hold up as long. So another great thing about the traction is that it does wrap on the toe and on the inside of the shoe as well, which gives you that kind of all round traction. So when you are low to the ground or you're getting up from a handle or whatever it may be, you've got that traction to help you get back up and even handle the ball from all angles, which is great. So with that being said, I would give the traction to the PG2. 100%, I think when you're looking at the way the shoe bites the floor, and the coverage it gives mm -hmm. you is taking the PG2. I think the outsole and this shoe is just a little bit more durable, but the traction in itself is just better than the PG2. So the point has to go to the PG2. Next up, talking about the midsole cushioning in both shoes, over here in the PG1, we had your Phylon Carrier with a four foot zoom unit. I am team four foot zoom. Facts. Yeah? Not happy with having zoom in the heel, I prefer it in the four foot. I just like feeling that especially when I'm transitioning onto my toes and this should provide that for me. It felt really nice. It didn't sacrifice too much court feel. So the pushing in this shoe was really good. In the PG2, we actually have the exact same setup. You've got that cord out file on midsole with the zoom bag in the forefoot, which felt fantastic. Yep. Say no more, it was just great. So what's great about the PG2 is that it's a step up, it's bottom loaded and it's thicker as well. So it felt even more great. That's not a sentence, but it felt even more great. Yes. Even more great, it's all right. I'm gonna go with even more great. I think they know what you mean. I hope so. Even more great. So the point goes to the PG2. Yeah. Straight up. I was in very bad English by myself. Even more great midsole. You <laughs> Next up, talking about the materials in both shoes, over here in the PG1, all we have is pretty much mesh all over with this sock-like, almost neoprene-like um, collar. It's a one-piece construction, doesn't have a tongue. We've got some synthetics, over here in the back of the shoe and obviously the strap as well which helps lock your foot down. In the PG2 we've got that all over mesh construction similar to what we have in the PG1 also with those premium materials dotted all over that suede at the back that neoprene in terms of the sleeve even though this one does have a tongue but it's just kind of broken down in a different way yeah. and then of course even in these four foot bands as well with that suede aspect so premium materials a light a flexible material does a job. I think the materials in both shoes are really good, require minimal breaking time, yeah. but the, the, the slight touch of the premium materials in the PG2 just make it a bit more premium, so I, I think the that. point does have to go to the PG2 for sure. Yeah. Now talking about the fit in both shoes, they both excelled when it came to fit Madness. in the shoes because it was fantastic the way they both fitted. Crazy. Here in the PG2, the materials break in really nicely, you also have that four foot strap that pretty much adapts to any foot shape mm -hmm. really, which feels fantastic. The material is breaking really well and the shoe fits fantastically as well. The sock-like inner booty construction that the shoe has is something that PG wants from his shoes because yep. they fit really, really nice. So well. It's a snod-like fit, 
which breaks in and just conforms around your foot. It's, it's an really adaptive good. snug fit and the same thing here in the PG2 as well. The best thing about the PG2 is this four foot band which acted as the new strap. Yep. So in the PG1 you've got the strap. The only problem with the strap is the durability. That in time that Velcro is going to fade, it's not going to help with the fit as much as it should. Yep. In the PG2 you take it off, you get these two bands and now you've got it for pretty much life. And that is the one of the best things about yep. this shoe. The fit was next level. The lacing system is all put together in a way which is next level as well. It's, it's easily this one yeah. has to be this. It's as close as it is, as close as it is. PG2 takes it. PG2 takes it. 100%. Moving on to the support in both shoes. Over here in the PG1, it's all about how the shoe fits. Yeah. The fit of the shoe provides the support for you. Obviously, we have that four foot strap which locks your foot down. We also have an outrigger of the shoe which helps prevent excessive lateral movement. And then heel counter, which is also there, prevents any excessive heel slippage and contains the heel in the shoe as well. The main thing about the PG1 is that lockdown, that one-to-one -one fit it gives you, which really helps, does an amazing job, sorry, of locking your foot in the shoe. In the PG2, we've got so many similar aspects. Most of them are pretty much the same. Yeah. We've got the outrigger we spoke about. We all know what that does. It helps with the lateral movement. The forefoot band, which was once a strap, does the exact same thing, keeping you locked in in the forefoot. We've got that heel counter at the back, but in this one, we've got more padding on the inside as well, which helps with that Achilles lockdown as well, which all has something to do with your shooting form, your, your defensive stance. It really does a trick where it needs to when we're talking fit and support. So once again, it's looking like a point for the PG2. 100%. Now, last but not least, talking about the price in both shoes, and the price in both shoes is actually the exact same. They both retail for £95. Yeah. But one of them is a winner, and we're gonna explain why. They're both £95, yeah. but what you get in terms of value for money, you get a little bit more in the PG2s. You both have four foot zoom in both these shoes, yeah. but in this shoe it's eight millimeter, but you get 10 millimeter in that one. They both have nice materials, yeah. but you get a hint, a little touch of suede in that shoe, which makes it a bit more premium. So for value for money, in terms of what you get, in terms of performance wise, you guys already see the points. The PG2 is a clear winner you get more value for your money in the PG2. Not much, but a little bit. They're both fantastically um, affordable shoes. Oh, I wouldn't say cheap, 95 pound is still quite expensive, yeah. but in terms of what we have compared oh. to other, other shoes, Facts. Kobe's, you're doing too much nowadays. LeBron's, you're doing way, way too, too much. much. You know way I mean? too much. Too much. So getting something shoes. under 100 pounds is fantastic. Facts. Do you know what I mean? In both of these shoes. But in terms of value for money, PG2 takes a cake with this one, and it's, it's easy to say that one. I completely agree. So, all right, guys, there you have it. Looking at the score, the score is 6 1 to the PG2, therefore making it a winner and a huge step up from the PG1. A massive step up. It's mad. It's huge step easily up. a huge I'm, step a, up. Chill, chill, chill. Big chill. man thing step up. Chill, 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 chill. Hey, chill. Min. It's a step up for sure, performance wise. Aesthetically, we, this is clearly the winner. That's one point. But it's not a huge step up. Do you huge. Mean, the you want to see the score? 6 1. Timmy, I ain't trying to fight you today, bro. I ain't trying to fight you today. Out here, trying I'm to fight hands. I'm tired. Because it's a huge step up. I'm Where did this tired come from? And you're. Like, you know what I mean? The six one is upset with me. They don't they did don't wanna see they don't wanna see us fight. Did I make the shoes upset with me? They don't wanna see us fight. Did I make the shoes? So alright guys, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and show us that support as you guys have already been doing. Thank you so much. Of course, comment down below if you agree with us, if you think the PG1, the PG2, which shoe you prefer, is the PG2 that much better than the PG1? Let us know, we'd love to know. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, at purekicks.ig, and Twitter also, at purekicks underscore TW. And of course, hit that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications to make sure you don't miss any content from Pure Kicks. That's it from us. This is the PG2. This is the PG1. We're Pure Kicks. Let's get it.